Hi, my last student failed entering highway, so in this video I will explain you how to enter highway and give you a guide to enter highway even in difficult situations. Let's go! Entering highway can be extremely difficult even for experienced drivers, especially if you have a lot of trucks passing by. That's why I developed a step-by-step -step to do list for my driving students to enter highway more easy. Imagine you're driving to highway and you're about to enter. You should make sure that you have the correct gear. So the first thing you should check is that you are in third gear. Why is the third gear the perfect gear to enter? Because it allows you to drive smooth around the curve and later accelerate all in the same gear. So use the third gear, it's the best choice. While you're still about to enter, make sure you're driving about 50 km per hour. That's check number two. Is the speed correct? 50 is a good decision because as well it makes possible to catch the curve without any problems and it will give you later time to think what to do if you're able to enter or is there a truck you're not entering it takes a little bit time to take the correct decision so make sure you're not driving faster than 50. The next point on our checklist is putting the indicator. As you can imagine you have to indicate left even if it feels sometimes a bit strange turning the steering wheel right to get into the curve but indicating to the left. Obviously you have to do so because later you have to turn to the left to enter highway and do it now because later you have so much things to do it is much better you have done this and get rid of indicating already. So point number three putting the indicator. So now you are getting closer to, up to the curve but before you enter into the curve there is step number four what you have to check. Look if the highway is already free or not. It is just a glance, something like a short look to the left if it's empty, if it's crowded or not and just do it shortly because if you stare at a possible obstacle people tend to ignore the curve and might fly out of the curve so make sure you just look shortly to have a first impression yeah after this you're driving around the curve and make sure that before going to the next step turn the steering wheel straight again because as well people think oh no what should i do and they're still holding the steering wheel to the right and this might cause that you drive out of the curve yeah so keep the steering wheel straight after this comes step number five look into the back mirror it feels sometimes a little bit strange because you want to know what is happening on the left hand side and you turn your head to the right to see what's going on but the advantage of the back mirror is that it's a big screen and you can see if the truck actually behind you is on your lane or maybe already made space for you because he's a kind truck driver they do exist and um, this to see which line he's actually driving it's much better to detect in your back mirror However, you probably have thought about it, you still have to look into your left and left and mirror as well. So step number six is looking into the left and mirror because in the back mirror you can't see everything and you have to be sure that on your left hand side is no one as well. All the checks into the mirrors are just to take one decision. Answer the question, is it free to go, yes or no? So how to take this decision? Obviously, if there is no truck, it is free, you could go. You can say, yes, it's free. Or if the truck is far away, but if he's closer or even more closer, then your answer of your question should be no, it is not free. 
So what to do if your answer is no, it is not free. Maintain the speed of 50. Why? Because the truck actually drives around well, he's supposed to drive 80, but in real he's driving 93, 94, and if you maintain 50, this car or this truck is nearly double as fast as you and pass you very fast, and you still are at the quite beginning of the acceleration part, so that you have plenty of space to accelerate afterwards. If you drive much faster than 50, let's say already 80, you will be already at the end of the acceleration path um, until the truck has passed you already and it might be not enough space. So better in case it's not free, your reaction should be, I will maintain gas and drive on with 50 and wait until the truck passed. If the truck passed or it was even totally free the whole time, then your answer of the question, is it free to go, is yes. And yes is connected with pulling down the gas pedal totally down to accelerate as fast as possible. Shoo! <laughs> then step number nine is following. You have to do the famous shoulder blick to the left, so turn your head to the left, check the blind spot to make sure that it's 100% free and you're able to turn. The best spot where to apply the shoulder blick is in the middle of the acceleration path, okay? So the next point on our checklist is turning gentle into the highway. The perfect spot to turn in into highway should be three or four quarters of the acceleration path that you still have some safety spot in front of you but otherwise already had a lot of space and time to speed up. So three or four quarters is a good place to start to turn the steering wheel gentle to the left. Why I do say gentle? because if you turn the steering wheel too much to the left, you might get into the risk to drive too far to the left, actually entering into the overtaking um, lane. So drive gentle out, keep the steering wheel straight again, and go ahead. Now there are still two things left to do. The first thing what I would do is turning off the indicator. Why should you turn off the indicator? Because while returning the steering wheel, this time the indicator doesn't jump off automatically, so you have to do it manually and it's easy to forget. If you're still blinking, everyone thinks you're about to enter the over yeah, the, the next lane to the left to overtake. Yeah? So better take it off and make sure you can go straight ahead. Last but not least, Number 12 on our checklist is changing the gear, obviously. Because we have sticked the whole time into the third gear, the last step should be entering into the biggest gear, which is in my car, the sixth gear. Maybe you have an automatic car, then it doesn't matter anyway. But um, sometimes you have five or six gears. If you have manual, go into the biggest one and go on. You have made it on highway. So if you like this video, you can read all the steps again in the description. However, if you think of another driving mistake and you want me to explain how to avoid a special difficult road situation, describe it in the comments and make it a topic of my next video. See you soon.